friends, we're going to come over to our circle time here in the classroom, and we're going to be working on the calendar. Uh, we're going to talk about what month it is, and what month is it? It's October. The date is going to be the 13th, October 13th, and our year is 2020. Uh, the season is fall. It's starting to get cool outside now that the leaves are going to be falling for the season. The day of the week today is Tuesday, and we're going to do our days of the week song. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. There's Sunday and there's Monday, there's Tuesday and there's Wednesday, there's Thursday and there's Friday, and then there's Saturday, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week, days of the week. And today it is Tuesday, yesterday was Monday, and tomorrow will be Wednesday. Okay, we're going to talk about opposites. Opposites is one, there is one meaning and then the complete opposite for the other, such as in and out. That's inside and outside. Up, where a balloon would fly, and down, when it would come down. Fragile, something that's very weak or strong, where it's very big and strong. Hot and cold. Open and closed. Big and small, like a pumpkin being big and the apple is small. On and off, the light is off, the light is on. Dry is the towel and wet would be the water in the bathtub. More and less, there's less items, there's more items over here. Okay, let's go over our colors today. We have red, orange, yellow, there's green, blue, purple, pink, black, white, and brown. When we review our shapes, we have circle, triangle, square, heart, star, rhombus, which is like a diamond shape, oval, rectangle, pentagon, and the bottom three, hexagon, parallelogram, and trapezoid. We're gonna do some movement this morning. I'm going to give you the steps that we're going to do, and then we're going to do it all together. So the first thing is we're going to clap our hands. So it's clap, clap, clap your hands. Then it's stomp, stomp, stomp your feet. Then it's swing, swing, swing your arms. Reach for the sky and touch the ground. And we're going to shake, shake, shake our hips. So we're gonna put all of that together to do our morning stretches this morning. So we're going to clap, clap, clap your hands. Stomp, stomp, stomp your feet. Swing your arms side to side. Reach for the sky and touch the ground. Shake, shake, shake your hips. Let's do it again. Clap your hands, clap, clap. Stomp your feet, stomp, stomp. Swing your arms, swing your arms. Reach for the sky and touch the ground. Shake your hips, shake your hips. Clap, clap, clap. Stomp, stomp, stomp. Swing your arms, swing your arms. Reach for the sky and touch the ground. Shake your hips, shake your hips. Okay, so we're going to practice doing some writing today. And I wanted to introduce you to our friends that we had from our story. We have Winnie the Pooh, Piglet, Tigger, and Eeyore. So if you can go get a piece of paper and a pencil, we can do it together. And we're going to be practicing Pooh and Piglet and the letters that it takes to make their names. So while you go do that, I'll come over to the board. Okay, we're going to start with Winnie the Pooh, and we're going to write Pooh. We're going to do a straight line and a half circle around, and that is the letter P. Capital P for the start of the first name, and 
Then we are going to do the other letters. We're going to do a lowercase o, which is like a small circle. And he has two of those in his name, so it's going to be two o's. So, so far we have P-O-O. -O. Then we're going to do an H, which is a straight line and like a hump over. So we have P-O-O-H for poo. For piglet, oh, the sound is the same. Another straight line with a half circle to make a P just like poo, they have the same. We're going to do a lowercase i, which is a small line with a little circle above the little dot for the lowercase i in piglet. We're going to do a G, which is like a circle, but we're going to bring it down and around to make it look like a G. P-I-G. Next is an L. A lowercase L is a straight line. And then we're going to do an E. A line and bring it around, E. Then our last letter in Piglet is a straight line, with a line over it like a cross, which is a T. Piglet spelling P-I-G-L-E-T. Poo, again, is capital P-O-O-H. Okay, we're going to take a little nature walk through the 100-acre wood, like Winnie the Pooh, and look and see what we could find. I have my little basket, and we're going to be collecting some things together. So maybe we can go on a nature walk and our pathway through nature. We have leaves here. This is an interesting shaped leaf. We have more leaves on this bush. Different shapes, different sizes. This one's small. This one was thinner than the one we just found. Oh, look at these. These are so big and long. Let's see if I could fit it in my little basket so we can keep searching in the 100 acre wood. Oh, these are interesting. These are very skinny and small, almost like blades of grass, but very long, very long, but still thinner than our last one that we picked off our bush over here. Okay, here we have a tree, but look at the leaves. Friends, what an interesting shape that is. So we have the smaller size, but here we have a bigger leaf that we're going to take to put in our basket. This is amazing. That is so pretty. Our beautiful tree here. I think I found something. Let's look. What? I believe it's a baby pomegranate because I know when I've seen the inside of these before, there's seeds in here. Okay. Okay, I found this bush over here with the purple flowers. Look at all these tiny purple flowers. I'm going to collect that, but look at the bush has so many different shades. A light purple, a darker purple. This one's almost a little more pink. So amazing to find all of these things in nature. So that's the conclusion of our nature walk through the 100 Acre Wood. Hopefully you can go out and find some fun things around your neighborhood where you live and see what fun things that you can find. Let's go read a story now. Hi boys and girls. Next we're going to read Winnie the Pooh's Secret Garden. One sunny spring morning, Winnie the Pooh woke up with a rumbling in his tumbly. Oh, bother, he said. I seem to be all out of honey. Now what is a hungry bear to do? Think, think, think. Pooh was a bear of very little brain, but with his tummy's help, he soon came up with an idea. He wandered through the hundred-acre wood to a tidy house beside a tidy garden. Then he knocked on the tidy door. Let's see who was at the door. Knock, knock. Rabbit! He was just about to do some gardening. Gardening looks like very hard work, Rabbit, Pooh said after a while. Are you sure it's not time to stop for a small smackerel of honey? Quite sure, Pooh, Rabbit replied. Would you mind 
handing me that watering can? Not at all, Rabbit, said Pooh, when he picked up the watering can. Let's lift the flap to see what happened. Several buzzing bees flew out from underneath. There are bees in your garden, Rabbit, Pooh exclaimed. It wouldn't be much of a garden without them, Rabbit said. Plants need bees help to turn their flowers into vegetables. I wouldn't know much about that, Pooh said. All I know is that where there are bees, there's sure to be honey, Pooh continued. He followed one of the bees, hoping to find some honey. Let's see what he found. All he found was the bee sipping nectar from a flower. Yes, Rabbit said. Bees need flowers to make honey. They do. Pooh squinted at the bees. Of course they do. It's no secret, Pooh. I see, Pooh said. If you'll excuse me, Rabbit, I have some very important thinking to do. He hurried out of Rabbit's garden and through the wood. Think, think, think. Pooh was thinking so hard that he nearly walked straight into a cloud of dust. He waved his arms to clear the air. Let's see what was there. Piglet! He was doing some spring cleaning. You're looking thoughtful today, Pooh, Piglet said. I've just learned that bees need gardens to make honey. Pooh leaned closer, and I heard it was a secret. So you're going to plant a secret garden, Piglet whispered. Pooh nodded. Shall we search for a secret spot to plant it? The two friends began searching for spots. But they found stripes instead. What do you two explore again, Tigger asked. Pooh told Tigger about his secret garden. All we need is the perfect spot, he finished. Well, you found it, Tigger exclaimed. He bounced up. Let's see what was there. A perfect spot for a garden. It's just right, Pooh said. Now I suppose I better Er, that is, it must be time to, oh, bother. He searched his head. What exactly is it that I'm supposed to do now? Piglet and Tigger had no more idea than Pooh did. So all three of them went in search of someone who was likely to know all there was to know about secret gardens and most everything else, too. Let's see. Owl! Do you know how to go about planting a secret garden, Owl? Pooh asked hopefully. Certainly, Owl said. My great aunt Eunice used to mention such matters quite frequently. In any case, I'm sure I have something here that will tell us exactly what to do. He led the way to his bookshelves and pulled out a large volume. Is that a book about secret gardens, Piglet asked? Precisely, Owl said. Let's have a look, shall we? Let's see what the book was about. The book was about cooking, not gardening. Of course this is a cookbook, not a book on gardening, said Owl with the ruffle of his feathers. What we need are seeds. Let's go borrow some from old Longears, Tigger said. They all went to Rabbit's house. What do you need with seeds, Rabbit asked when he heard what they wanted. It's a secret, Pooh said. I suppose we could tell you if, here, Rabbit said, just take the seeds. The friends returned to the site of Pooh's secret garden. Al supervised while the others got started. Pooh didn't know much about planting seeds, but following Al's instructions, he dug up a patch of dirt and dropped several seeds into the hole. Pooh and his friends were still planting seeds when Kanga happened by. Oh my, she said, you all seem to be working very hard. Let me bring you something to drink. 
She soon returned with a pitcher of lemonade. Thank you, Mrs. Kanga, Piglet said politely. The lemonade is delicious. It sure is, Tigger agreed, but what we really need is someone to help with all this digification. Kanga smiled. I might be able to help with that too, she said, pulling open her pouch. Let's see what was in there. Roo, he wanted to help too. With help from Piglet, Tigger, Owl, Kanga, and Roo, Pooh soon had his secret garden planted. Now we need to wait for the plants to grow, Owl said. Pooh smiled, and then I'll have all the honey I can eat. He patted his tummy to tell it to be patient, and then they waited, and waited, and waited some more. Weeks passed, the plants grew like weeds, and bees started buzzing around the flowers but there was no sign of honey anywhere. Where could the honey be, Pooh wondered aloud. He lifted a leaf, searching for any sign of tasty golden honey. A tomato! It wasn't honey, but it still looked delicious. Your secret garden was a delicious idea, Pooh, Piglet said. Yes, it was, Pooh sighed. It would be even tastier if it would just grow some honey. Just then, Roo arrived with Rabbit. I told Rabbit about your garden, he said. Pooh nodded. That's fine, since Rabbit is the one who told me about the secret that makes gardens grow honey. If only I knew the secret of where bees hide it, Pooh added. Rabbit looked confused. There's no secret to that. All you have to do is follow the bees to their hive. Look, there goes a bee now, Roo exclaimed. They watched the bee until it flew into a stump. Pooh pulled back some loose bark. Let's see what he found. Honey, it seems the bees in Pooh's secret garden had a secret of their own. After that, the honey wasn't a secret anymore, and neither was the garden. Pooh's friends stayed busy picking tasty vegetables, the bees stayed buzzy sipping nectar from the flowers, and Pooh stayed happy and rather sticky, collecting all the honey he could eat. I hope you enjoyed our last story, friends. Now we are going to read Winnie the Pooh, A Gift for Pooh. A Gift for Pooh. Early one morning, Winnie the Pooh was humming a little hum and thinking of what to have for breakfast when he heard a loud knock at his door. Now who could it be, Pooh wondered. Let's see who was at the door. It was Christopher Robin. Good morning, Pooh Bear, said Pooh's visitor. Today we're going on a gift-giving expedition. Oh, a gift exposition, I see, said Pooh. The boy explained that Pooh needed to find something he'd like to give away as a gift. Think, 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 said Pooh, wondering what sort of gift he might find. He opened his cupboard and saw, let's see what it was, a pot of honey. So he wrapped a ribbon around it. Then he and Christopher Robin set out on their expedition. The expedition began with a visit to Owl's house. Well, well, said Owl, seeing visitors at his door. As Pooh Bear nervously looked down at his honey pot, he heard Christopher Robin say, here's a gift for you, Owl. A set of pencils. These will be useful for writing my memoirs and such, Owl said with a flap of his feathers. Now I shall have to find a gift of my own to give away. Al joined the expedition, and the three soon found themselves in Eeyore's gloomy place. Well, Eeyore, Al said, I do believe I have the perfect gift for you. Let's see. His tail. Thanks, said Eeyore. I was sort of attached to it. Pooh nodded and held his honeypot close. 
Christopher Robin invited Eeyore to join their expedition, and off they went. Eventually, the gift expedition came to a bridge where the friends discovered Rue throwing pebbles in the stream. Below, Christopher Robin bent down to whisper to Eeyore, Yours might just be the right gift for Rue. Let's see what it is. A stick for playing poop sticks. Oh, cried Rue, this is the best gift ever. And with that, he excitedly threw it into the stream, making Eeyore smile ever so slightly. Pooh smiled too, looking down at his honey pot, which was still full. Rue joined the expedition, and soon enough, the group came across Tigger bouncing through the wood. Hello, Tigger, Rue cried. We're on a gift. Exo, exo, er, I have a gift for you. Cookies! Mama made these today, explained Rue. Hoo, 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 Tigger said. These are what Tiggers like best, and honey is what Pooh Bears like best, Pooh said to himself, feeling a little rumbly in his tumbly. Next, the expedition led by Tigger headed for Rabbit's house. When Rabbit looked out his window to see Tigger bouncing toward his garden, he rushed outside. Let's see what happened. But it was too late. Rabbit's garden was a mess. Suddenly, Christopher Robin had an idea for a gift Tigger could give to Rabbit. He borrowed some paper from Rabbit and one of Al's pencils. Then he began to draw. Let's see what he drew. A picture of Rabbit's garden. One that can never be disturbed by Tigger's bouncing, Christopher Robin explained. Tigger was delighted to give Rabbit something so useful, so he helped the boy complete the picture. With that, the expedition continued on to Kanga's house. They found her baking a cake, and Pooh found himself thinking how tasty a mackerel of honey would be. Luckily, Rabbit's gift was just the sort of something Kanga would like. Let's see what it is. A bunch of juicy carrots. Oh my goodness, thank you, Rabbit, Kanga exclaimed. I'll use them to make a nice soup. After everyone had eaten a piece of Kanga's delicious cake, the expedition set off once more. They soon arrived at Piglet's house where Piglet was sweeping the leaves from his front walk. Kanga had wrapped a very special gift for Piglet. Let's see what it was. A purple scarf. Oh dear, Piglet squeaked as Kanga wrapped the gift around him. Thank you, Kanga. When Piglet heard that his friends were on a gift expedition, he grew very excited and rushed inside. It was a red balloon. This is for you, Piglet, said handing his gift to Pooh. Why, thank you, Piglet, said Pooh, realizing then that he had forgotten to give away his gift. Pooh slowly picked up his honey pot and looked all around, wondering whose it should be. Then Christopher Robin said, silly old bear, everyone knows there's no better gift for a Pooh bear than honey.